words. They don't just communicate thoughts. They reveal the hidden things in our hearts. They don't just communicate ideas. They create worlds. The mouth and the words we say are a creative force that is not only used all the time, but everywhere we go. Our words are the very essence of how the Creator made us. Join us as we discover the essence of man and the power of speech. Hey, welcome to the Essence of Man and the Power of Speech. We are on day 122, day 122, and this is going to be a really good one today. I mean, I think they're all good, but you know, there's certain ones that kind of stick out because of the life lesson we learned. But today we're going to talk about trusting God for every need. Now, what does that have to do with evil speech? Everything. Because when we don't trust God and our needs aren't met and we go out on our own and we panic and we evil we speak evil and next thing you know we're complaining and we're murmuring and we're gossiping and we're blaming and we're, we're you get the drill okay but speaking evil uh, causes uh, as we've talked about it causes many different problems okay that that that, that that's that's what we know but speaking evil doesn't uh, cause God to move faster uh, on behalf of the matter. In other words, you going and complaining and murmuring about the situation isn't going to make God move any faster. It's not going to make people move any faster. Again, I'm going to go back to, to uh, Psalms 37, uh, 3. Where it says, trust in Hashem and do good <clears throat> that you may dwell in the land and nourish yourself with faithfulness. This means when I'm trusting the Lord <clears throat> and I have total trust in Him for every need and I'm doing good in the process, God's faithfulness is going to show up somehow, some way. It will always show up somehow, some way. A person <clears throat> who trusts God uh, speaks no evil because he is at peace. Where there's trust, there's peace. And where there's peace, there's a mouthful of peace. Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. If you're if you're at peace, you don't speak evil of people. If you're not at peace, you're going to complain. You're going to murmur. It's it's that simple. There's a really cool story I want to read to you. Um, and it, and it, it really kind of sums it all up. Um, here, here, here's the story. It says, uh, A king who possessed great wealth and power and ruled over his kingdom in grand style one day, News reached the royal palace that a small, insignificant village had rebelled against the king's rule. And what did they do? They weren't, they weren't giving of their grain and all their other things that they were supposed to give for the whole kingdom. So one day news reached the, the royal palace that a small, insignificant village had rebelled against the king's rule while the king's advisors were debating what sort of punishment should be dealt the rebels the king went for a stroll in his garden. He came upon a beautiful bird chirping in a, in a very sweet way. A servant obeyed the king's orders uh, that the bird be brought to the royal palace so that the, king and his, uh, so that the king and his family could enjoy its chirping. As the bird was being carried to its new home, it began to chirp a little song. Someone said aloud, How lovely are you? How lovely are the songs that you sing? How I worry that you may go hungry now that some of the king's subjects have rebelled and refused to give of their produce for the royal family and its pets. 
A servant of the king replied, You foolish, ignorant man. Need a king who rules over scores of provinces and whose storehouse overfloweth with abundance worry about a few grains that his bird needs for sustenance? How foolish can one be? Just because a few people take from you doesn't mean God isn't going to provide for you. Just because a few people in a little village refuse to tithe off of their stuff to the king didn't mean the bird was going to starve because the king is overflowing in stuff anyway. And much like the creator, he is overflowing in stuff. And just because people steal from us or do whatever, we have to be still be in a position of trust. Trust and do good. That's the combination. Trust. That's, that's half. Do good is the other part. We're still going back to this trust and do good. I told you it was going to happen. Speaking evil about people ain't going to change it. Speaking evil about God isn't going to change it. It's just going to make things worse. Trusting God and doing good keeps a mouth out of trouble. Because when you know you got to do good, you put a guard over your mouth. And the Bible says, He who guards his mouth keeps his soul from trouble. When a person guards his mouth, he keeps his soul, his life from trouble. But don't worry. The king... Hashem, the creator of the universe. He's got a storehouse full of stuff. Love, joy, peace, whatever. And so when somebody wants to take your peace from you or your joy from you, don't worry about it. Don't let them do it. Be like that bird. Just keep singing a good song because that's what makes the king happy. That beautiful song. Matter of fact, it was that beautiful song that got the bird into the palace. You realize that bird ain't going to have to worry about any storms. The bird ain't going to have to worry about food. He ain't going to have to worry about predators. When you sing a beautiful song unto the Lord, Shimrash, Halashan, good speech, holy speech, you're always going to be invited into the palace of the Creator and He will watch over you and He will take care of you. He will, he will guard over you. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide in the shadow of the Almighty. will say unto the Lord, You are our refuge, our fortress, our God in whom we trust. Psalms 91. And with that, keep chirping a beautiful song. <laughs> hey, we'll see you next time on The Essence of Man, The Power of Speech. Have a good one.